X-Men. Yes, I'm kicking off my series with X-Men reviews leading up to X-Men Apocalypse. But some of you might be thinking, didn't you already review the X-Men movies? Yeah, I did, and it was like terrible quality. But my thoughts on this movie changed, so I had to quickly delete those videos and have got new reviews and new thoughts on these movies. Now, let's get started with the original 2000 X-Men. And since I am re-reviewing these films, I'm going to go more depth with these films since I did not do that with my older reviews for these films in the past, which those were terrible, so I had to quickly delete them. But yeah, let's get started with X-Men. Honestly, I didn't see the first X-Men film until I saw the first Avengers back in 2012. Because honestly, at that time, I wasn't really the biggest with X-Men. I knew of them, but I wasn't really into them until my cousin, who was a Marvel fan like me, he grew up with the 90s TV show that he grew up with around my age. And then he gave, gave me the DVD collection of the, of the first five season of the original X-Men cartoon series, so I watched the first couple episodes, and man, after watching those first five seasons, I immediately had to watch the movie, because I love the 90s TV show, it's, in my opinion, it is the best representation of the X-Men, but uh, after watching the first movie, it was good, like, it was good for the, it was good for, a, it's actually a decent start to a, uh, probably a decent lucrative franchise, because because this film has plenty of problems, and I'll get into it. But before I get to the cons first, I'm going to talk about the pros. But the first pro, Hugh Jackman. Still, to this day, the best Wolverine we have. I mean, no one I mean, no one can ever replace this guy. I mean, he actually made this character his own. I, can see, I don't see anybody replace Hugh Jackman. I know some people think Tom Hardy or somebody else, but Hugh Jackman nailed his Wolverine. And actually, my cousin told me back in the day when this movie was first even mentioned, like it was, it was in production, he was against Hugh Jackman being cast as Wolverine. And man, at the time when he first saw this movie, including myself, he was wrong. Dead wrong. Wrong. I have more great casting. Patrick Stewart and Pres uh, Professor Xavier. That's brilliant casting right there. I don't, e I don't even watch the Star Trek The Next Generation TV show, but I've seen photos of it, like like certain episodes of it, like a like few episodes of it. I knew this guy, I, my cousin knew that this guy would play Xavier. Even me, when I first saw, saw some episodes of, of The Next Generation, I'm like, that's Professor Xavier. Right there. You also have E. McKellen, Gandalf himself, as Magneto. That's excellent. No pun intended. But that's is that's awesome casting right there. These two elderly actors were were made for for these roles. They were fantastic. You also have James Marsden, greatest Cyclops, Famke Jensen, greatest Jean Grey. And then we get to Halle Berry as Storm. Look, I have nothing against Halle Berry. She's a great actress. I love her and I love her work. But she wasn't the best choice for Storm. I would have gone with somebody like Angela Bassett as Storm, other than Halle Berry. I mean, she doesn't she doesn't really. She gets better over time, like in in the other films, like in Days of Future Past. She's better in that film. But here, she was. She was just wooden, and her lines were terrible, especially when she killed off Toad. I'm not even going to say the line, because y'all know what the line is, for those who've seen the film. It's like, oh my god, they could have gone with so... They could have they they gone with somebody so much better than Halle Berry. Now, no disrespect to her, but she just wasn't... She wasn't really all that great as Storm, honestly. In this film. Now, I'm one of those few people who didn't mind the change of Rogue's character in this movie. Yeah, it's terrible compared to her comic book counterpart. But, Rogue is, is a very, is very important to this, to this movie because, because when she found she had these powers, she hates them. She goes to Xavier Gift of, the school of Gifted. Even she doesn't belong there. She feels like she doesn't belong in this world as she, as Wolverine understands where she's coming from. And that's one of the biggest biggest plus of this movie is the chemistry between Wolverine and Rogue in this movie. I know it's not really faithful to the comics or whatever, but it works for this movie. One of the things I was surprised going back watching this movie again is that this movie is very serious. It's not really lighthearted. It may, it does have its light moments and no, that's like when Wolverine gave, gave the middle claws the Cyclops. That was pretty funny. 
But other than that, this movie is pretty serious. It's not dark. It was well, kind of you could you could say it's dark and gritty, but it's not nothing like fan four stick where it's just bleak. It's so unnecessary to be dark. It's necessary for this movie to be dark and serious. You can see how humans are prejudiced to mutants. And you can see Magneto's side of it, which I can understand, and Professor, Professor Xavier's side of it, which I can understand too. So both, so really, you can see that they live in a world where humans hate mutants, just like how in slavery time, whites hate blacks, which Stan Lee kind of got the idea of, of X-Men from slavery time, which I kind of looked up, which I can see that. And again, both... Professor Xavier and Magneto have great chemistry. You can definitely tell by the first scene you see them two together, they have a history. And I can definitely understand both sides that Magneto was the start of war with the humans and mutants. I can understand his side. And I can understand Xavier's side. He just wants peace with humans and the mutants. He doesn't want no conflict at all. He just wants everyone to just get along. Which, both sides are very understandable. Which is why they were so great in this movie, which I forgot, I forgot some of the supporting cast in this movie. We also have Rebecca Romaine as Mystique, who doesn't really say much in this movie, but gives a more of a sinister, sexy atmosphere to her, which she's fully nude, so of course she's sexy. We also have Tyler Maine as Sabretooth. Tyler Maine as Sabretooth was perfect casting, who then on played Michael Myers in the Halloween reboot, which those movies Suck. Also have Darth Maul himself as Toad, which he's pretty good as Toad. I didn't mind him. He wasn't anything great or anything. He was just there to me. The other thing that this movie gets made fun of is that the X-Men wearing black leather costumes. Yes, I'm tired of seeing them now. I, I wish they could just wear their accurate comic book outfits, but hey, what can you do? It's not like you can see Cyclops in his comic book outfit or Wolverine in his comic book outfit. X-Men was a decent start. To the superhero movie boom, because after this movie, we got the first Spider-Man, and then we got X-Men 2, and then we got, and then went on and went on and went on, we got other really good superhero movies. So, X-Men, I gotta thank X-Men for that. Even though it do have some problems and nitpicks with this movie, and oh, also the CGI of this movie is dated. This movie has not aged well over time, which, which is, which is, the movie came out in 2000, so, it, so it's gonna, it's gonna age. But on all in all, this is a pretty decent start. I'm gonna give X-Men a B. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will be back with my review of the original 1990 Turtles film. It's gonna be next after this review, so stay tuned for that. So what do you think of X-Men, the first film in the comment section down below? And if you are new to my channel, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.